Well, hello, Fox class at Darn Hall Primary School. It's Reverend Joe here from St. Chad's. It's really great to be with you guys via video today. And I know your teachers have been asking if we can help discover what Holy Communion might be here at church. So I know I can't see you, but pop your hand up if you've been inside this church or any other church before. Okay, wonderful. Some of you might have, some of you might not have. Well, today we're going to take a journey all about Holy Communion. And some of you might know what that is, some of you might be a little confused, or some of you may never even heard of it before. So we're going to have a look at that together. And we're going to make our way from here all the way up to the altar table at the top of the church, where we're going to look at the bread and the wine together. Now, there are going to be some points in this video where I'm going to ask your teacher to pause, okay? And you're going to have some chats together as well. So teacher, you might just need to be near the pause button for this video. And so let's start with the first one. I wonder how you guys might celebrate special occasions. Maybe that special occasion would be a birthday party, or Christmas, or Easter, or weddings, or baptisms. You know, why do we do that? Well, usually it's because a special event is taking place. So just have a quick pause now, and I want you to discuss how do you celebrate special occasions? What do you and your family and friends normally do? And why do you celebrate special occasions? Have a quick pause and think that through. Well, well done. As I'm sure that you've been speaking about, and I've just said to you, we normally celebrate special occasions because something special has taken place. So someone's just had their birthday, or someone's just got married, or a baby has just arrived. Something wonderful has taken place. And that is the exact same reason why we celebrate Holy Communion here in church, because something special, something wonderful, something amazing has just happened. And back in the time of Jesus, so around 2,000 years ago, the Jewish people, as they still do today, celebrated a festival called Passover, and it would last for a number of days. And the Passover was to remember how God rescued the people of Israel from the, from the hands of the Egyptians, you know, when the Israelites were taken into slavery in Egypt and they were forced to build the pyramids. Well, we remember how God rescued his people from the cruel Pharaoh. And every year since that event took place, the Jews celebrate this festival called Passover to remember and to celebrate that important event taking place. And so when we look at the Bible, and on Monday, Thursday, as we call it here in the church, Jesus sits down with his disciples, his friends, to celebrate that festival of Passover. But he also says something different. He tells his disciples that something brand new is happening, that God is going to do another Passover, that God is going to rescue not just the Jews, but the entire world from the powers of darkness, and he's going to restore every human being's broken connection with God forever. And so just before we go any further, I've got a little video to show you all about that event taking place. The story of Easter, the Last Supper. This is Jesus. hey -oh! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, uh, hi. The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That 
is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the twelve disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, Take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this, to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. Well, welcome back, Fox Class. I hope you enjoyed that video. I love those cartoons. Now here, we're now at the altar table here in church. It's a really beautiful and precious part of our church. Put your hand up if you've been right up to this altar table before or to a different one. Excellent, well done. And the reason why we have it right here at the front of church is because here at church, we don't just worship God through what we say or what we perhaps uh, do in the pews. When we enter communion, we, we use our bodies to worship God as well. So we physically get up and we walk right up here to the altar table. And in that, we are using our bodies to enter a different space of the church and to understand that something particularly special is happening right now. And you'll, as you would have seen in that video, I've got a few things here on this table to remember that communion that took place through Jesus and his disciples as they remembered the Passover and that something new was taking place. So I've got the wine right here where we're remembering that Jesus gave his blood upon the cross. And we've also got here a plate with some bread on it. And here in church, we use a communion wafer, but I know some churches use big loaves of bread as well to remember Jesus's body. And ever since Jesus's first communion 2,000 years ago, here in the church, usually every Sunday, we celebrate that special event which took place. Now, I'm going to ask you to pause again because I've got another quick question for you. What happened three days after Jesus's crucifixion and why might that be important? So have a quick pause now and answer that question together. Well done, so I'm sure you got some really good answers there. And I'm sure at least one of you said that three days later, after Jesus' crucifixion, he rose again from the dead. And that is the core aspect of why we celebrate Holy Communion. Because God not only has given himself on the cross for us to restore every human being's relationship with God, but also he rose again three days later to finalize that victory, that final power over sin that God removed it all for each and every single one of us so that we can all become friends with God. And so when we come to the communion rail, we remember those important events that are taking place and we celebrate this together by eating the bread and taking the wine. But you may find as well that some people come up to the communion rail and they might want to take communion, but they also would like us to pray with them and to pray maybe to remember and to celebrate this important event but also at times where people are facing quite difficult challenges in their life and the, you know, they might be a little bit sad 
or upset about something. And so at the communion rail, whilst we celebrate all of this, we pray with people as well. And it's really important that we remember as Christians that it's not just about taking Holy Communion, which is important. It's really important that for the rest of the week, you know, from Monday all the way to Saturday, we, re we remember what we learn here in church and what we celebrate together and make sure that we act as Jesus was, would want us to act in the rest of the world. So it's important that we're kind to people and that we show forgiveness and we're polite and that we show love and understanding to other people. It's not just about what happens on a Sunday. Now, I know that some churches like to do communion in a different way. And here at St. Chad's, we're, we're Church of England. So we've got very set ways of doing things, you know, with this big table at the front and the candles and the silver goblets and whatnot. But I know some churches as well like to have different things. So they might celebrate Holy Communion at home and use different cups. And some churches might like to celebrate Holy Communion in creation and outdoors in the world. And there's no real right or wrong way of doing it. It's just different styles and different people. And God celebrates that we're all a bit diverse and different like that. And I think he likes that we have a lot of variety in it. Now, this is kind of a short intro of what Holy Communion is, but I'm sure many of you have got many of your own questions. So I would love to hear some of your responses. So maybe you want to even make a video of yourselves asking questions or send a few questions over via email. And I would love to have a chat with you all sometime, maybe over Zoom or something. And as soon as it's safe to do, to do so, I would love us to be able to gather here at St. Chad's and explore the church and have a look at all these different symbolic things that are here and to continue that conversation about Holy Communion. But it's been lovely to be with you today, Fox Class, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care. Bye.